Hey there, good afternoon. So for those who haven't seen my previous videos, I thought that I would explain a little bit of context here. I am on a road trip. I started in Northern California about a week ago, drove across California, Nevada, Utah, and I found that hotel for 50 bucks in Dove Creek. I knew nothing about Dove Creek, but it was, you know, within a uh, striking distance of various other cool things to see around here. So I just kind of booked it and thought, well, I'll see what it's like when I get there. But yesterday I was looking for a little something to do, and so I looked online what to see around Dove Creek. And there was something really awesome, and I am at it now, so check this out. This is the ancient kiva of the Lowry Pueblo, a ancient Native American, not really sure if you should say a town or a village or what, but over there is the main building. I guess it was basically this uh, little town that was centered in this one main, basically fortified structure with only one entrance. So I came here yesterday and checked it out, and then it is on the way to where I'm driving next. I think I'm going to go to Mesa Verde, and then I will end this video in the Rocky Mountains, which are out that way. I will leave it a little bit of a mystery where I'm uh, going to uh, stay tonight, but a really cool spot. And so this ancient Native American town existed, I think, like 1,300 years ago or so. We'll be seeing uh, more info on the plaques. And so that uh, building there was a self-contained enclosed building with fairly uh, fortified walls there and only one little entrance going in. So they speculate that, well, it must be because of the possibility of attacks from neighboring tribes or whatever. They really don't know, you know, much, but uh, here you can see, this is the Great Kiva. And as it explains here, Kiva is not the appropriate word for the tribe that lived here, but uh, that gives you the general idea. It is like where there would have been ceremonies and gatherings. Great Kiva activities help to define the community and to develop a sense of social identity and perhaps of organized community religion. People who lived near Great Kivas may have organized seasonal events and maintained the Great Kivas for regional use. Great Kivas are special buildings that were used for community activities, including important ceremonies. Tree ring, dates, and pottery indicate that this Great Kiva was a relatively early building at Lowry. It was remodeled many times and used continuously by every succeeding generation. So over centuries and centuries, these buildings were occupied and remodeled, expanded. And so it's okay to go inside the rooms here. I guess uh, this was obviously further down. Dirt has filled in.
Lowry Pueblo is famous for its four kivas with painted plaster discovered in the 1930s during excavation sponsored by the Chicago Field Museum. And so I guess this is also considered a kiva as well. A communal gathering spot. And so that is the only entrance apparently into the uh, structure, the one that I walked through. And then there would have been uh, walls here and continuing here. Notice how this west wall is straight and featureless. It is the back of the building. The apparent absence of ground floor doorways may show a concern for defense or at least a preference for ladders, roof, entryways, and limited access. So whether or not it was a matter of there being warfare around here between tribes, maybe that is false. It is just speculation about why this big building had only one little entrance into it. And so it's kind of like a apartment complex with different, you know, living spaces. All right, gonna keep on cruising. Next, Mesa Verde. So I'm inside Mesa Verde National Park. You can see there the date, AD 600. This is a region of uh, various Native American ruins. The short version of the history is that people arrived here and began uh, settling into these areas around 550 AD and then kind of mysteriously left around 1300 AD. So this is just one of the uh, sites and there is much more. Thank you.
so amazing. This is so much more extensive of a site from what I remember from when I uh, visited here when I was a kid. I think I came twice and I just remembered the main palace, which I think is closed for the season to go inside. You can usually get a, a tour inside the, uh, I guess it's the Cliff Palace or something. We'll be at least seeing it. That's the most spectacular thing to see here at Mesa Verde, and we haven't seen that yet. That's where I was before, on the other side of the canyon. And then those uh, dwellings were under the cliff here. The Mystery of Sun Temple. Sun Temple is a never-ending source of speculation for scholars and visitors alike. It was built sometime in the 1200s and was part of the community of cliff dwellings that surrounded it. Its D-shaped outline, no evidence of roofing. Few doors or household artifacts and massive architecture is unlike any other structure in the park. Of the few similar D-shaped buildings found in the region, it is the only one not built within a pueblo. Could it have had social, ritual, or even symbolic functions? Some studies suggest it had a role in celestial observations. So there is the uh, view from the top. And so I guess this is where you would drive to go do a tour of the Cliff Palace that I just showed and actually be able to go down and walk into it, which is what I remember the most from uh, the last time I was here when I was a kid. And so it's really a shame that you can't uh, do that now because that is like the main experience. But uh, still, that was absolutely just mind-blowing to see, uh, you know, so many of the uh, dwellings. I'd just forgotten how much there was to see here. What a extensive civilization, you know, system of communities that it was all throughout here. And so uh, I'm going to turn around. There might be a little bit more to see on the way back, but basically I'm going to be uh, driving back um, out of the park and then heading towards the Rocky Mountains. Looking forward to it. Going uh, that way, things are going to get higher and colder. So good news, we can get closer to one of the uh, cliff dwellings. Normally I guess you can actually tour it. It is closed to touring, but uh, right across there, the Spruce House. Some little structures wedged in to those cliffs there, and then the main uh, village it looks like. Really nice. And then on down to springs and something else, but part of the cave. Is, uh, the spruce tree house. And so I'm going to do this trail that I guess goes to some petroglyphs. Trail open for petroglyph and spruce canyon trails. So uh, let's do it. Stretch the legs. Get a little hike before I uh, get back in the car and drive another couple hours. Get a little bit uh, better view of the buildings. What a interesting place to live. I wonder what life was really like. It sure seems nice, just the landscapes and, you know, the way that these uh, villages are, like, protected in the forests. Who knows what the incidents of conflict were. Probably there were some, but uh, maybe it was, you know, pretty peaceful for the most part. And the weather is not uh, too extreme. It's actually kind of perfect here. Today is April 5th, 
The reason the things are closed is they are closed for the winter. They open up in May. But this is a great time to come because uh, it's not too hot, not too cold. But even in the winter here, then it would be cold, of course, but uh, not, you know, Arctic conditions, not uh, Michigan or Canada or Alaska. It would be relatively mild. And then summers, it's going to be hot. But it's not down, you know, in the plains where it's going to be insanely hot. And so it's a really uh, nice terrain to uh, live in if you can, you know, survive, find food and water. All right, petroglyph. Amazing trail here. There's the visitor center up there. I'm really not sure how far this goes to the petroglyphs. There was a uh, indication on the map that it was 2.4 miles, I think, round trip, but I'm not sure if that was this trail or the other one. Whoa. Very cool. The trail goes like right between these rocks. Hope to hell an earthquake doesn't happen right now. So there's a uh, junction. Man, love these cliffs. A great ledge up there. You could like live up there, it looks like. And then there are these numbers along the way. Must be part of an audio guide. So is that natural or man-made? Looks natural. Big old overhang here. Maybe this is where the petroglyphs are. So those might be uh, modern graffiti, huh? Well, so far, I'm not seeing any obvious ancient petroglyphs. Seems like a good spot for it, though. It's like some scorpion, or... <laughs> it's hard to tell. That could still just be like a discoloration from water or something. I can hear people over there. So this uh, trail wraps around this canyon. Wow. It is just such ultimate exploring. I just love these kinds of, you know, the dry trees. The uh, clean air, and then just these never-ending canyons with so many different shapes and natural caves and cool little hideaway spots and like, whoa, this is just trippy right here. I guess this is all natural, it seems. Did you see any obvious petroglyphs? Yes. 
they're up ahead? Very end of the trail. I yep. see. Excellent. And that's a short ways here? Or? Um, uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 more minutes. Okay, maybe. cool. It's supposed to be a loop, but it's I don't know not if, a loop. if you can figure out how to get up get up there safely, then more power to you. I see, but the trail just kind of dwindles or something? Um, right where the petrographs are, you'll see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, there's like a small set of steps, but then you kind of have to climb up like under these bigger rocks. Okay. And it just didn't look feasible with the kids. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'll investigate. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Enjoy. Right on. So this kind of looks like it could be a ancient living space. That looks like blackened by fire. And a great uh, ledge up there. Also, fire blackness. Oh, and the uh, wall. So there you go. There's your answer. Let's see if uh, you can get a closer look there. All right, we can get a uh, close-up view, finally, of one of the uh, cliff dwellings. Hey. Very basic one, but gets the idea. There you go. There was a fire right there. So it's starting to become apparent that the 2.4 miles that I was thinking of has to be one way, not round trip, because there's no way that that was only a mile and a quarter to this point, and I'm not even to the end of the trail yet. So it's looking like this is a five mile round trip. And boom, here they are. Look at that, looks like maybe a mountain lion, a lizard, a hand, a sheep, a bird, more handprints. Wow, very nice. It was worth it, even if that is all that there was. It's very kind of rudimentary, you know, just like kind of random stuff. I mean, maybe it, you know, tells some sort of a uh, story, but it isn't nearly as orderly looking as, you know, like the Egyptian hieroglyphs, where it's obvious that it was just like, you know, you read this way and it's all in a line and everything is like really perfect. But I'm sure that there is some, uh, you know, symbolism, something about uh, their culture, their lives, what they hunt, maybe some ceremonies, or maybe just somebody doodling around. You know, a couple people came up here one day and were like, ah, let's just draw some stuff. That's possible too, right? Like they really don't know exactly what the uh, situation was over what sort of a time period that was done. Days or weeks or months or years or centuries. Anyway, just random rambling. So I guess uh, this is where the guy said that it might make a loop, but it gets too difficult or something. Museum? I guess it means the loop back to the uh, museum at the uh, visitor center. I guess maybe that's what the uh, building is, is museum, not visitor center. I think it's closed. I didn't go in. So maybe it is a uh, easier hike if it gets up on top of this plateau here and then you can just kind of cruise across. So let's check it out. And look at that stunning view. So down there you can see the other trail 
That looks amazing as well, totally different. It'll be more downhill and then uphill coming back. So epic. And then here's the top of the plateau, just right there. So let's see if uh, it's gonna be a easier walk than going back the way I came here. Looking good. Museum. All right. It looks like it's gonna be a uh, walk along the rim of the canyon, so that'll be nice. Flatter and more straight and level. All right.